pray real quick. Father, we thank you so much for the joy of Jesus, the joy of Christmas, and the joy of the story of Christmas. And Father, tonight, will you just be reminded of, remind us of just how amazing and how wonderful and how tremendously special the Christmas story is to us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated, and as you are, just watch this video. Tonight, we want to focus on the thought of story, the Christmas story. When we gather as family, and that's what I look at this weekend as being, it's an opportunity for us as a church family to gather together, and we think of story, and uh, story comes to us in the form of movies, and I bet for a lot of you that part of your Christmas tradition is to watch at least one of those movies that you saw a clip from. But story comes to us in many different forms. Stories come to us in the form of a movie. But stories also come to us in the form of song. And so tonight we're going to sing some song that just remind us of the Christmas story. 
And so let's just, if you want to just listen, just listen. If you want to sing along, sing along. But the, the story in song.
story comes to us in a lot of different forms. It comes to us in the form of movies. It comes to us in the form of songs. But sometimes story is just shared. Uh, for some of you, a lot of you here tonight are guests. Over the last couple of weeks, I asked several people, in our, or I asked people just to share a Christmas story, something that has happened in Christmas that you, you share. And one of the things about family gathering together is sometimes there are certain stories that just get told every year. There are some stories that are just incredibly funny. Uh, I read the story last Sunday of Linda Den describing the time when her older sister decided to open all the gi- her gifts <laughs> before Christmas Day, and she wanted a winter coat. And then, the, but what she opened, she really hated. But she wrapped it back up and then faked that she liked it on Christmas morning, <laughs> and then had to wear that winter coat the rest of the year. <laughs> so there's stories like that that get told. I love one Rich Rich Mortensen wrote. He said, my sister and I sometimes squabbled, as siblings do. And one year when I thought uh, she had not been nice to me, I threatened to give her a rock for Christmas. Sure enough, with her real gift still hidden away, she opened a box to indeed find a rock. The very next year, someone made a mint on the pet rock fad. He said, I was ahead of my time, just not (laughs) an entrepreneur. In Monica's family, one of the stories that gets told, and it was funny listening to her ask her mom for validation of this story. One Christmas, their furnace broke. And so in the midst of them opening presents, they got a call that the furnace repairman was coming. And so everybody had to stop opening presents. They all had to go to the basement, clean the basement, so the furnace guy could, could repair their furnace. Christmas stories. You know, some stories are just funny. Some stories remind us of gifts that we received. Um, i got to find that one, that pile. Da, 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 da. I had this all organized in my mind. I don't know. (laughs) Like I said. Oh, this one's funny and it's a gift. I was anxiously waiting for a romantic gift from my husband of less than one year. And lo and behold, a huge, very heavy package was under the tree for me from him. But what a surprise to open to find a brand new muffler for my car (laughs) from my at that time mechanic husband. As the years have passed, I've learned to appreciate my practical husband's love language. What a blessing he is to me and our family. Vicki Elwood wrote, she said, when I was pretty young, I remember my dad couldn't wait to give me my present. And a few days before Christmas, he picked me up, carried me into the cold spare room, and reached high into the closet to give me my dolly. Mom couldn't believe I remember it so clearly since I was only three years old. And this one is very special. It said, one Christmas, I was at a loss for a gift idea for my old farmer dad. So along with the underwear, socks, and bib overalls, I wrote him a letter telling him how much I loved him and why he pre- um, and why he proceeded to announce to my kids that it was the best gift I ever gave him smiley face thus began a habit which ended at his memorial service when I wrote and read to him one last note Christmas is a time to share story And stories are very special to us. There's memories that are shared. Kim wrote about the memory of uh, a blizzard Christmas when her brother came over and loaded her and all of the presents in the truck and took him to to her brother's house and then returned to get mom and dad so that they could share Christmas together. Memories are so incredibly special as well. Joy recalled driving... When, when she was a teenager and remembering 
that they all decided there wouldn't be gifts. Instead, they would make a long trip for family Christmas. But much to her surprise on Christmas morning, not only had they made the long trip, but the tree was loaded with gifts underneath. Story. Share your stories and enjoy the stories that you share. A couple of that were really special were the stories of specific years. Leslie writes about 10 days before Christmas having a gift in 1985 in Grant. And, uh, and, and uh, Julie's mom writes about the year that she, she was adopted. Story is so incredibly important. But stories also remind us of some great traditions. And one of the reasons why I wanted to have asked you to share these is maybe tonight a different tradition. You know, Christmas Eve for a lot of families is a tradition. It's to gather together and to share the story of Christmas. Fred writes, a tradition of the church I attended when I was a child was to have a Christmas children's program on Christmas Eve. Each student of the Sunday school class was assigned to memorize a piece, and on Christmas Eve, we had to recite it in front of a huge crowd. Scared to death and relieved to have it finished, and at the end of the program, receiving a huge sack of candy, fruit, and peanuts. After the program, we would go to my uncle's house and have soup, not necessarily exchanging gifts but just having fellowship with cousins. The after Christmas Eve service tradition continues today, and we gather together with family and to enjoy fellowship. The tradition helps me prepare for the real meaning of Christmas and the birth of Jesus, knowing that the next day is going to be the great day of celebration. And... and Interestingly, Sandy wrote, ever since we had, a, have, had grandchildren read a storybook about Christmas with a Christian perspective, and even though the grandchildren are now young adults in their 20s, we continue the tradition. It's a must. We keep focused on the meaning of Christmas. And, one of my, and another wrote, one of my favorite parts of Christmas season is when we get to play Anonymous Santa. By that I mean we give gifts to an individual or a family that would otherwise have very slim Christmas. They do not know where the gifts come from. Still, signed, still anonymous. Story. Celebrate the story of family gathering together. Celebrate the story of Christmas. And we can celebrate the story in song. And let's continue by singing a couple of just very familiar oh, Christmas carols that remind us of the Christmas story. Sweet. 
the stars are brightly shining it is the night of the dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and ever pining till he appeared and the soul its world, a thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. continue tonight's theme of story and uh, that alike, um, one of the things we are privileged to do is uh, we're going to get to hear uh, from one of, our, one of our very own. He is pretty much the patriarch. He's, he's uh, one of our most eldest congregants. <laughs> and so tonight, uh, somewhat reluctantly, Raymond is going to come and share with us. So we just thank, uh, welcome him on as he comes up here and come up. Um, is your mic on? Did you, is it on? Okay. Come on up and have a seat here with me. 
Um, Raymond and I, we've been talking this week, and, you know, one of the things we've been thinking about was, uh, you weren't around for the first Christmas, but, <laughs> but um, what we wanted to do was, was talk about some of the stories that, that probably nobody, if, very, if so, very few people in this room can remember, and, and you, you um, have just a, a great story to tell us, and so I wanted to ask you about the earliest Christmas that you can remember. Well, I think the earliest one I can remember was probably 1931 or 32. 1931. Uh, I got a probably Your mic is not on. You're not get invasive here. Hang on. It's on. 1931 or 32, I got a color book for Christmas. I got a color book for Christmas, and I was real happy with it. I thought it was great. Okay. Um, what was, so 1931, 32, what's going on in the world at that time? Well, the, the crash in the stock market had come in 29, and the world was in sort of bad condition, uh, or, the, or the country was, uh, financially. And so we didn't have a lot to share. And how old were you well, then? I've been four or five. Four or uh, five. Born 27. And you told me earlier, you lived where at out here? One mile east of Griswold. That's where I lived. And I had no relatives in this country except my mother and father and brother. During that time, did you guys, or, or maybe even from that time to now, did you have any traditions, or what traditions have you developed with your family over, over, that, over all those years? We really didn't have any traditions in our family, because uh, we was away from the family. It was just uh, my folks and my brother and I. Uh, the rest of our family was a thousand miles away. What about now? Do you guys do anything now, or with your kids, did you develop anything? That well, nothing yearly, I guess you call it, but we, we, we get together a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty easy to do when there's so many of you. <laughs> so the question that I know all the kids want to know, especially, what were your gifts in 1931? Well, I think that color book was one of the main things I remember, but then in years following, uh, we got mostly clothes for Christmas. You told me a story when we were talking about it, about you and your brother coming down to the tree, and there were two pile of clothes. They weren't even wrapped. They were just piles of clothes. clothes <laughs> under the tree. Yeah. And, and how would you feel about that? Just happy to get them. Yeah, happy to get them, grateful. Yeah. You know, and tonight is really about the story. We, there's so many stories that we all have that, that revolve around Christmas and things like that, but it, it always goes back to the Christmas story. And so... In a moment, you're going to read that for us. But I just wanted to ask you, you know, remembering all the way from 1931 to now, how or why do you think that the, this Christmas story, how has it re maintained um, such importance to you? Well, we, went, we were in church all the time. I went to church from the time I can remember until now. And uh, so the Christmas story was important to us and to my family. I, I, when I asked Raymond to do this, one of the things he kept saying was he was he was totally okay with reading the story, but he he kept saying I don't I don't know how me telling you about myself has anything to do with a Christmas Eve service. <laughs> um, so I, I know how important it, it is to you, but um, I would love it if you would just do us the the privilege of just reading us the Christmas story tonight. This Christmas story is taken from the Gospel of Matthew and Luke. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at the words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, 
you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. <coughs> Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit, because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. In those days, Caesar Augustus heard issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place when while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee to, in Judea to, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men of whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which it, the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told then about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Thank you very much, Raymond. In just a moment, we're going to share communion. And tonight, we've been talking about story, and we've heard several different uh, stories. We, we've read some that were written on cards. We got to hear Raymond's uh, story. 
Another thing that, that happens with stories is that sometimes we can have things that remind us just of stories just by the things we look at. Um, we have a little cup and uh, of juice and a little cracker that tells a story that tomorrow, not only us here in this room, but people all over the world are going to celebrate a story about Jesus. And it's important to remember those old stories, the stories that happened way before your time. I'm so thankful that I, I know a, a person who grew up in the Great Depression and to hear some of those incredible things that I didn't ever get to experience um, makes me more grateful for the things that I have now. And as we come to this time of communion, as we remember the story of Jesus, I hope that you will remember and just continue to reflect on how much um, Jesus gave to us. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for the story that you started to write so long ago that included every single one of us. Father, that it began with a baby and still going on and, and your pursuit of us and as we as we come to this time to just remember and and celebrate father we just want to say thank you for your love and for for your kindness as we as we give generously and, and open presents tomorrow and just enjoy company father I pray that tonight we will not forget to enjoy your company. And Father, I just thank you so much for, for all that we have. Father, we thank you. In your son's name we pray. Amen.
as we sing this song, Silent Night, we're going to just pass the light. And so somebody, will, if you will just, once you receive it, will you pass the light to the person beside you? Father God, we thank you so much for the story of Christmas. We thank you so much that we can just celebrate together as family. And Father, will you just bless the family celebrations that take place tonight and tomorrow and tomorrow morning as we gather once again for worship that we can just celebrate the story and to know that on a 
on this special season, we celebrate the birth of Jesus. But all that Jesus means to us as Lord, as Savior, as King. And Father, we know that you will reign forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's stand as we close with this song. In the bleak midwinter, Yeah.